time of season, that time of year, the Emmett County Fair is here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark James Mullins with highlights of the 2011 Emmett County Fair, also known as the Emmett County Agricultural Show. It's held annually in Esterville, Iowa, and represents the six communities of Emmett County. Esterville, Armstrong, Rettinger, Ringstead, Wallingford, and Dolliver. A fair board of directors are elected and serve terms. As with almost all county fairs, you'll find a number of things to see, do, taste, touch, smell, and you'll likely find many of your neighbors and friends there enjoying the events, as I did. At this point in time, admission to the fair and the parking is free. The fairgrounds are located on 3rd Avenue South, a few blocks west of Iowa Lakes Community College. Just look for the sign and be sure to check out the website in advance of the fair for the complete list of events, www.TheEmmettCountyFair.com. Thursday the 28th marked the first day of the fair with a horse show. Riding helmets used in horse events are nothing new for jumper classes, but are becoming more a part of other classes in these shows. Don't assume at all that these are the same as bicycle helmets. A proper equestrian helmet is designed for the additional height in case of a fall and forces that the horse could exert on a rider in case of a buck-off or similar mishap that could affect the skull. Given time, these helmets will have more improvements and greater comfort. And bear in mind it was just over 20 years ago that rodeo associations began encouraging their rough stock contestants to adopt protective vests, particularly for bull riders. Protection is good. You have to feel for that poor piggy. Here are some of the critters on exhibit. The upper Midwest had a heat wave during this year's fair, but not as hot as the week before. Still, there were days where heat advisories made headlines in the forecast in Iowa and throughout the Midwest. Because of the heat, fair staffers always encourage entrants of livestock to check often and ensure their animals have enough water. Although there were a few dry bowls, it didn't take long to get them filled again. For a rural county like this one, there was a good variety of animals on display with many breeds and in good health, testament to the care their owners give them. As a kid, some 40 years ago in Arkansas, I had two albino rabbits entered in my county fair. One scored a blue ribbon, the other a red. There's a lot of work and love that goes into these show animals, but it's also invaluable in teaching responsibility and instilling good pride in the next generation of American farmers and ranchers, the most productive in the world today. Now on to Friday evening, day two of the fair. Tonight, the tractors show off their power. One of the flagmen is Roy. Roy Gage and family run a successful garage in Esterville, and I've traded with them since moving here two years ago. If you live in Emmett County and receive the Esterville Spirit weekly in your mailbox, watch for his occasional articles peppered with humor, knowledge, and good old common sense. Roy took a few minutes to give me some insights on the pull, a mainstay at the fair in which he's been involved with for at least a decade. I have to apologize for the strong wind noises you'll hear in the interview. For this pull, there's no sanctioning organization I've been made aware of, although some who participate belong to such organizations. He also gave some of the names of regulars and the family ties that bind with the sport. Dale Heatland, uh, his, his nephew is just like a son to him, and his son drives it, but he's got that, he's got that M formal with the 350 Chevy in it, and that's really one of really professional job, really. I think Dale runs a body shop. Talk about the red form all the Yeah, the red oh, form. Well. That, that's a really got aluminum rims on it now. That's a nice tractor. And then that orange hot rod is a uh, shell. I can't think of it. Harvey's, the Harvey boys. Yeah, that thing's been around. That's kind of the original hot rod around here. They've had that out here for 20 years, 25 years. That's actually a Ford. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a Chevrolet. Chevrolet frame for a, a, a pickup frame. What was that, yeah. an, that, that antique? There was, a, there was a, a particular antique one that I noticed last night. Um, not quite orange. There's more brown than anything. And uh, pretty slow. Doggone, I wish I could remember the makeup. Was that, a, that, was that an M Farmall, maybe, that was running in the open class? That was kind of painted an off reddish brown color. 
See, See there, there was one. This, 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 this look brown. You could definitely tell it been used. Oh, it was kind of a yeah. There was a Minneapolis Marine U there. There was just that might have been it. Yeah, I think I remember of, the announcer saying yeah, something yeah, about yeah, that. Marine U. And then that, another guy. It was interesting. There was a fellow had a had an M farm off. I think it was an M. Yeah. But he had it hot rodded, but with a stock motor. But he ran through it. She got it under load, and he was just. And I started walking forward because I didn't think he was going to get anywhere. And then he just kind of got a full pull. Exactly. That was the noise it was making. He got a full pull out of it. And I didn't, didn't sound like he was going to get very far at all, you know. But he was running way too rich. And, you know, this, you know, blowing black smoke. And it just when it hit idle all right. But when he got on his main jet, he was like, you have to wait too rich. It's an interesting, that was an interesting uh, pull because they had nothing but trouble the day before. You know, you see those packers that have, all, you know, street packers, that, dirt packers that exactly. have like 10 tires in front, 10 in back. Well, that packer, you always wonder how they change those inside tires. Well, I think they wound up with three or four flats on it the day before. And they had to fix all those tires. And then the blade that they were using, that had a flat tire the day before. Then that as they were getting ready, everybody's supposed to weigh it when they go across the scale. And somebody had an axle sticking out, caught the wires and pulled them out of the scale. That's why we started a half hour late. They were trying to get those fine wires, but that kind of goofed things up. They had a heck of a time, but then they couldn't weigh anybody. And you're supposed to weigh before every pull. Wow. But everybody knows what their tractor weighs and everybody knows what it takes to make the next weight up. So they just put everybody on their honor and turned them loose and says, well, we're just going to trust you that you're at 70. So everything went wrong and we turned out having the best pull we ever had. And then those guys that were pulling in the late classes, I think they were from Butterfield. They was, you know, had those hot international, those turbocharged diesels. Mm -hmm. uh, they were very impressive. You know, we're tickled pink that they were there. But, man, those guys have spent a lot, a lot of money. <laughs> you know, they put on quite a show. Not only did they put a show on, but uh, are these tractors also used for general farm use? No, it's well? pulling tractors now. It, you know, yeah, they got the pump set up so high and the bunch of fuels they pumped through, I don't think you could, even the $7 corn, you couldn't afford to. <laughs> couldn't afford to pour the fuel in one of them. Yeah, that was a, it was, it was a good pull. But yeah, the guy was having trouble with the late sled, you know, he used triple circuit breakers. And when it got over, the one circuit breaker went out and the cooling fans quit and <clears throat> overheated there while he was getting packed up and ready to go home. Yeah, everything went wrong and we had a really good pull. Fun. Just beautiful night. Everybody got to visit. Time to, you know, that's what I like is they get all the. I really like when they get the crowd all gets in there and everybody's visiting with their neighbors. The two sleds, you get, you don't. It picks up the tempo, you know. There's action all the time. And we had some natives here that came back for this. Didn't we? Oh yeah, there? yeah. We had uh, particularly Jeff, Jerry Hansen's son. Jeff is from Texas. He comes up tries to come back every year. Jerry is well into his 70s. He's lifting weights. He'll run about six, seven different, you know, he'll run about six tractors and multiple classes with all the tractors. And you got to change weights between every class. So that guy, you know, it's nice to have his son here, and his grandson here, to just to tote weights. But Jerry's just absolutely addicted to pulling. I mean, he, he, you know, he pass up a good-looking girl and a hundred-dollar bill for a trophy. You know, <laughs> out in his mind, he loves his trophies. And the crowd loved what Jerry and other participants showed us in sheer horsepower and torque. Not that many left their seats as the action went well into the night, despite the buffalo gnats and mosquitoes biting at their worst. Even the fireflies put on a display before the big lights came on at sunset. Day three of the fair brought out a different kind of tractor and power for them. The Iowa State Pedal Pool Association set up a 50-foot course and had on hand a number of tractors that run on kid power. I spoke with one of the officials to learn more about the event and association. We go around to different areas and we pull kids from 4 to 11. And uh, our state pool is in Marshalltown, Iowa at the Coliseum, and that will be the 10th of September. Marshalltown's got the bid forever, <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, Nationals will be in uh, Mitchell, South Dakota, 
at the Pope Corn Palace. Really? So it's not that far. Oh, kids really enjoy it. You get to meet kids from all over the place. So what are the rules? Uh, they, um, they do the same thing the big boys do. They just do they're in a right. miniature stick. You know, it's scaled. It's all pedal down, of course, yep, but yep. but they've also got going to be a sled tour. Yep, yep. The sled moves, the box moves with the weight, just like the big boys do. <laughs> yep, but that's all pedal power. <laughs> Some of them little kids will surprise you. You get to see a lot of kids. How long are you going to be doing it? 22 years. Wow. And uh, we watched them go from four-year-olds through high school. Yeah. And we still have kids coming up and going, remember me? <laughs> you growed up some. So to sum it up, pedal power or the pedal pull, whatever you want to call it, it's a sport where not every kid gets a trophy. But for those who really give it their all, that trophy and the chance to compete in Marshalltown, maybe the Nationals, is awaiting them. Some showed the agony of defeat in more ways than one, if you get my drift. For those who came through, there were moments of celebration that were truly priceless. Well, folks, that wraps the 2011 Emmett County Fair and Agricultural Show. It was a whole lot of fun for the three days that you've seen of it so far. But stay tuned for day number four. I've got some of the highlights of the sheep and cattle exhibitors. Also, Saturday night, we had Chris Berg. He is a caricature artist from the Cedar Rapids area. He came down to uh, show off his talents. We also had uh, free uh, music as well as a meal Saturday night. And on Sunday, there was also a little more free food there as well for those who stuck around and enjoyed all the different activities with it. Uh, until next time, bye, y'all.